Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, we are a mere few hours away from BlizzCon's opening ceremony, and that means that this will be an interesting day for Diablo 4 players, no matter what actually happens. Diablo 4 will have something to announce during this, and all the fun announcements happening during the opening ceremony, so of course, it's worth noting that this will be happening there. Then there is also going to be a live Diablo 4 campfire chat on stage at BlizzCon tomorrow on the Saturday as well, which likely is there specifically to talk about anything that they announce in the opening ceremony for Diablo 4 in a bit greater detail than they'll have time to do there for at the main event. All this to say, it's a big day, so leading up into this event, I thought it'd be fun if we broke down everything we know for sure, use that to make some predictions about what will happen at BlizzCon, and of course, after the opening ceremony, I will be here to talk again about what actually does happen. Starting off then, rounding back to that campfire chat, to me this means that they have something important to talk about in the opening ceremony, especially doing it live at BlizzCon. That means the timing of it is of course important, and they wouldn't do that if they were just there to talk about like patch 1.2.2 or something like that, which means one or or even both of two things is going to happen. The first one, which is just a guarantee in my mind, is the announcement of Season 3, as well as a teaser trailer at the minimum just to start generating some hype around a new concept. And it's worth noting, this is going to be the first season that hadn't already started being worked on in some capacity before the release of the game. So this should be a bit more interesting and involve a bit more understanding of the player base too, which is something impressive to say given that Season 2 is doing a pretty good job of that in itself. That said, even though we are only really a couple of weeks into Season Season 2, it makes logical sense to me that they would still want to use this opportunity to announce something for the game at a big event. And the next thing that we are guaranteed to have is Season 3 hitting in January, so it's pretty hard to disagree with that, honestly. It's also very difficult to predict anything about a new season, but I think we will be seeing a notable different side of Sanctuary here for our next season. In Season 1, we had the Malignant Plague. In Season 2, we had the Vampiric. Well, honestly, it's also a plague, let's be real. So while they obviously did have their differences, it was basically the same concept in a different shell. Season 3, I think, will be a stark contrast to that, and like with Season 2, diving into vampires is a sort of Halloween homage, I can very much see Season 3 finding something wintry to go with, either in a literal sense of just snow, ice-themed enemies, sort of overarching theme based around how Sanctuary has just suddenly entered a massive blizzard and there's a massive temperature drop and we have to find the beast behind it, who is probably, you know, the beast in ice, the new boss that we got this season. Or they could just go a bit more metaphorical with it, do something like Christmas spirit, spirit realm based stuff, natural balance, druidic type concepts potentially to go with the season instead. Of course, it is still Diablo, so no matter how they handle it, the story will be dark and full of death, but you can do that with slightly more whimsical concepts of play too if you do it right. It's all about how you put it together. As far as actual predictions then, I think the team has seen the success of Season 2 and will probably try to build on it with a similar manner. Hopefully they don't get too much of the same and actually get creative with this, but I think the style of powers is now making a lot of sense in Season 2, boosting different playstyles for every class rather than mostly being class-specific ones that didn't really work that well. But I think that might not be all. There is a very decent chance that we have the announcement of something quite a bit bigger than that. The main source of this is an interview done with Rod Ferguson, the general manager of Diablo, by Kind of Funny Games. He mentions that there is the concept with this game of annual updates, suggesting an expansion once per year on top of the regular seasons we get too. Past that, he goes on to say during this interview, before launch, that they are working on expansion 1 already, and even starting to get going on expansion 2. In other words, the first expansion for the game was confirmed to be in development already a solid six months ago, and it was started before that point too. That wasn't the beginning of the process for it. Then in an interview with Dixerto that was actually during season one, Rod Ferguson doubles down on this with what could only be a confirmation, saying that looking back on the game's launch in the first season, it's the foundation. It's the building blocks of the game, and they're still looking towards the future. That's what they're concerned about. They're looking at their quarterly seasons and annual expansions. That's it right there, folks. All the confirmation you really need is recent as September that there was still full plans for annual expansions. And I'd say it's about 95% chance that that includes next year. I don't think the base game has made them change anything up. I don't think the release and the reaction to it has changed anything with it. And so logically, if there is something as big as an expansion coming out for the game next year, a major content update for a Blizzard game, what better place and time to announce it than at BlizzCon? And so with that in mind, I am on absolute high alert for the announcement of a Diablo 4 expansion tonight that will release next year. As for when during the year, I would say it's pretty likely right around June or July, right around a year after the base game. My main questions are how is this going to work with the quarterly seasons though, because obviously it wouldn't make sense to release an expansion mid-season, it would just create a bunch of confusion and it would probably not even work that great from a coding perspective, but equally I think it would be weird to have a season start at the exact same time as an expansion launch, because then it will be hard to immediately differentiate the new things that will be staying forever from the new things that are only temporary. Just a really weird overlap. But they have also said that we are getting four seasons per year no matter what at three months apiece, which means that there should be a season running pretty much just all 
always into the future from how they've worded it. The exception that I can see here, though, is having Season 4 be a couple of weeks short, maybe, stick in the expansion at the end of that in, like, July, give it about a month before Season 5 starts in, like, September, just like the month that we got between the base game release and the start of Season 1. That could be a very reasonable cycle for the game to take, honestly. Past that, we should talk about something pretty simple conceptually. Should we even have an expansion this early on? Well, for a lot of people, the answer is, at least in theory, yes. More content, more activities, larger changes to the game, a new class, all that stuff is things that we want in the game to the add to the enjoyment factor of it. But my question of it is the price. How much would we be willing to pay for an expansion on a game that has outrageous cosmetic costs, a premium battle pass, and was priced as a full AAA game on release as well, a release which was pretty rough for the first couple of months, especially heading into Season 1 where they basically just treated the player base like their beta, nope, no, alpha testers. It was pretty sad to be a part of, honestly, but as of Season 2, they've really sort of righted the ship. It isn't perfect, but it's heading the correct direction. Is that enough, however, to justify asking for players just for more money to be able to continue to play the game properly? I don't know. Cosmetics are one thing, of course, in this game they are super expensive, but I never really bash cosmetic selling microtransactions a game because it doesn't really affect the game. Sure, I'd rather have it for free as a part of the game, I think that is a much healthier place to be for the player base, but you aren't selling power, you're just selling visuals, and if that's what's needed to keep the game actually being run and updated, sure. But expansions are full-on game content, and you'll get left behind really fast if you don't get the expansion when it drops. Once you get past the mental hurdle of whether or not you are willing to pay for it as a general concept, the next question is, of course, the price. How much would you be willing to pay? Personally, I think around 40 bucks is right if we're talking an annual expansion, provided that it actually has some major content within it. Full game price would be insane to ask people to do every single year, even though that is how WoW prices their stuff, they aren't on a yearly expansion cycle, so things are a bit different there and we shouldn't base it off of that. I think the highest that you can get people to stomach on a yearly basis is $40, and knowing Blizzard, I doubt we are going to get anything lower than what they think is the limit people can stomach, so that's my expectation. That is also the type of question I expect to get asked and answered at the campfire chat the next day, as they always do a question and answer session, and if that doesn't get brought up before that point, people will definitely be asking about it there. That just about does it then as far as my own personal expectations then, but I thought it would also be a good idea to just do a quick roundup of the two potential leaks that have come out about Diablo 4's BlizzCon announcements, so if you don't want to hear about leaks, this is the time to dip out. That said, for those interested, I've talked about this in greater detail in a previous video, so here I'm just going to be going over the generalities of it to round it up before BlizzCon itself, and whether I think any of it is believable or or not. The first note here is that the expansion will be called Lord of Hatred. I think that's believable, but also not much of a leap in logic given that the story will focus around Mephisto, which again is something that we could easily assume given that the end of the base game and how the devs have specifically stated that expansions will continue the main campaign sort of story forwards. They also say that the expansion's actual map will be the Kurast region from Diablo 2. This is actually extremely possible given that the city was raised by the corruption of Mephisto and has heavy links to him, and because it is also directly south of the current playable area of the game if you look at the map of the Diablo world as a whole, which could make it very easy for them to just connect on there. This one's definitely believable, but could also just be a smart logical leap from someone who is up to snuff on their Diablo lore, doesn't necessarily confirm anything. After that, it mentions a new class called the Spiritborn, with files mentioning nature, wings, and soaring, which sort of sounds to me like a cleric -y type thing, but then the nature part makes it a bit more druidic, so this is very vague and doesn't really give much info, but I guess on terms of believability, the name Spiritborn is alright. It's a bit fancy for Diablo's normal class names, but I could see it for sure. Then it talks about a mercenary system, such as there was in Diablo 2, or the followers in Diablo 3. And with the history of those systems existing, it is definitely possible, but I just sort of want to not believe it, because on a personal level, I would rather they devote more developer time to endgame activities and functional game improvement, rather than a mercenary system. Though if this leak is to be believed, they would have their own entire equipment system and even talent trees for you to customize, which would be pretty neat if that system were to exist. Then it just says that raids are possibly coming. Sure, I mean, I guess, yeah, that's not really a leak, raids have always been quote unquote possibly coming because this game is more like an MMO than any Diablo game before it has ever been, so people have always been asking the question and they've always said no current plans, but that tells us nothing concrete. Then it mentions runestones and says they could be a season 3 thing. If you want, you could easily link this to runes from previous Diablo games, and here that could take a couple of forms, but if it is a seasonal mechanic, then I would expect it to actually be closer to what Diablo 3's runes were, where they simply applied altered versions of skills, and so maybe with season 2 being all about generic powers, 
Season 3 could be all about class-specific powers and getting players to interact in a world where their individual skills are the things that are changed in the season itself. That could actually be quite a cool shakeup if it's the case, but that seems a bit too good to be true to me, so definitely take that with a big grain of salt. Then there was also another leak, basically saying a lot of the same things but with a ton more description and a couple of changes, like the name of the expansion being Nahantu, and also describing a definite raid, giving a lot more detail to the whole concept of the Spiritborn class 2 and some other stuff as well, and honestly, this leak as a whole, I think it's just somebody with the same information from the first leak, wanting to get some attention and writing this whole thing out, adding a bunch of description, because this is just not how the info would be presented to them in internal servers. They specifically wrote it out, all flowery and interesting like game descriptions, because they want people to believe it, and that makes me not believe it. The first leak, pretty believable. This one, I wouldn't expect any of this stuff, including Season 3 being called Dreamscape, even though that is a believable season name, it seems like this is just too related to the new class that they line out, and this sort of implies that Season 3 will include this class, which means that it would include the expansion, and with Season 3 hitting in January, I just, I have such a massive amount of doubt for every single bit of that. And that just about does it then, everyone. Mostly just a recap of my own expectations leading into BlizzCon, the various sources that have led me to believe what I do, a bit of a chat about what might transpire at the campfire chat, and some questions that we need answers to from the devs before I even know if I want to have an expansion this early on. And then of course just a roundup of the bits of leaks that have come out the last couple of weeks in relation to all this stuff. Again, after the opening ceremony, I'll be reporting on any Diablo-specific announcements, with more detailed coverage happening after the campfire chat tomorrow, so stay tuned for all of that if you're interested. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye